Hi, I'm Todd Jones. What I have here is a fuel pump off a 2010 Articat TRV 700S. Uh, the ATV quit running and so I did a little troubleshooting. I think the pump is not putting out the rated pressure. So pulled the pump here and went online to quantum fuel systems. You can see them at highflowfuel.com and I bought one of their OEM pump rebuild kits and I'm going to show you how you take apart fairly simple fuel pump and so let's get started. So this is what we have here. That's the discharge on the top suction on the bottom. I already took off the filter that was located on the bottom and it smells so I got it in a Ziploc bag since I'm in the house and my wife was kind enough to let me do this inside so I could get a decent video. What you have here is the fuel level mechanism. You see there that's what gives you your fuel level indication as that rises and lowers. Again, I mentioned the suction of the pump, and then power to the pump back in here. So first disassemble it, you need to take off the fuel switch. And it's a little tricky if you're not sure how to do it, but all you gotta do is grab it on the bottom and push up, and it comes out of the slot. There you go. Just release that because we have to take the bottom off. So now you can just leave that hanging. Those wires are go through the wiring harness and you can't disconnect them. Next thing is you have this bottom piece that's got to come off in order to remove the pump. It's not really obvious how to do that. I had to study this thing for a while. You know, it, it's clear you can see you got to twist it off, but something's holding it from being twisted off. So what you have to do is get a little tool, screwdriver or something will work. You have to slide it in here. There's a little tab you need to get it under. It's a little tab in there. And you got to pull that tab up and then rotate it at the same time. Like I said, it's a little tricky. Let me try it from this angle. See if I can get it. Nope, it's gotta come in this side. So, got the tab pressed, and then you just twist, and then pull it down. Oop, and there comes your pump. So you can see the pump has a positive and negative lead to it. Just gotta disconnect those. And here we go. So I already see what my problem is. That little gasket needs to go in this hole right there that has to seal so you don't lose pump pressure. It looks like my problem probably is just this gasket, but since I got the tank out of the ATV, I got the fuel pump out, the ATV is a 2010, so we're talking 12 years old. I'm gonna go ahead and put a new pump in. But if I had to guess, this ain't supposed to be split like that. There you go dry rotted uh, the fuel over the years have just ate up that rubber so got the nice little kit again from quantum fuel systems it's the only uh, place I'd recommend they offer a OEM fuel or you can get one of their high high flow fuel pumps I did I decided to stick with the wall bro um, let me get it out of the bag. 
Let me show you. So everything comes nicely packaged in the box. quite read that but it says Walbro that's what the manufacturer originally used in this ATV and you have the uh, fuel regulator I'll show you where that goes in a minute and you have the new filter assembly that goes on the bottom The regulator, fuel regulator, I didn't show you taking it off. I already had it off, but I'll show you when I put it back on. It goes right here and it's very simple. Okay. So first we're gonna wanna get the new gasket, new style gasket. It goes on the discharge in the housing, looks like this. I'm gonna put a little lubricant on it just a small amount so it slides in there a little better. It's a little silicone based lubricant on the outside. That goes on here like such. And we got it lubed up a little bit. Trying to get it to slide in there a lot easier. Okay, you got indications on here. It's hard to see in the video, but you got a positive and negative. The negative is the smaller terminal, so they kind of made this, manufacturer kind of made it so you couldn't mess it up. Connect those two terminals as such. You have them connected. Try to keep that fuel level out of your swung out of your way. Now we need to go in. You'll see a little slot that I'm gonna slide this ground wire through. Helps keep them separated. Went right in this slot right here, that little slotted part. And now we're gonna it's gonna be a little difficult to get the new seal in there. So you gotta push it, once you get it lined up, you gotta push it very hard to get that new seal to sit properly. I'm gonna try that again. It's critical that that... All right, I haven't tried this one before. I think what I'm gonna do differently. We're going to change that up a little bit. We're going to put this in first, then we're going to put the pump on. I think it'll go a little easier. First time at doing this, it's not hard. Anybody can really do it. So you got to learn from my mistakes on here. So here we go. Try to get it down in that spot. There we go. That's a lot better. Okay. So we have the seal in there. Now I'm going to put a little of that lubricant, just a little, on here. just to get that to go in a little easier. So we need to hook the wires back up. Now we're gonna push that in there. You wanna make sure you got it seated as far and as best you can. Okay. That feels pretty good. All right. 
Now we put this back on. And so putting that back on, you're gonna see these tabs on there. And, all right. Simply push it back on and turn it and you hear it click in place and it's not going anywhere. The pump's not gonna fall out or anything. Put our float back on. You'll see the tabs on the back of that float and the tabs on there. You just start out at the top, put it in at the top, push it down, and you have your float. Now the fuel regulator. It's got some O-rings on there, so I'm just gonna put a little something to make it slide in there a little easier. A little more silicone on that. And that goes in. Right in there. Fuel regulator. Just clicks in there. It's good to go. And then we put the Got a little retainer for it. And you'll see, you got just some tabs on there. You see me squinting with my glasses. Need some good glasses. Gonna see something. Can't quite get that one to snap on. I'll take another look at it here. There we go. That thing doesn't snap on as easy as I thought. So let's take another look, see what's going on. Just need to make sure we got the exact same. It's the old one. Yeah. The new one had an extra. This is the old one on my model. New one's got an extra O-ring on there. It's keeping it from going in. So, for my model, didn't have that. I'm gonna remove that. Some may. There's a bunch of different small variations in these pumps through the model years. There we go. Actually, I think that O-ring could provide a better seal. But it's too large for that. Okay. Let me take the top. That's it. Clipped on there. That's the rebuilt pump. And I'll show you the last piece. Didn't mean for this video to take this long. It's really a quick deal. I got to get some clamps, but that'll go on there like that. And then the new filter will go on there like that. Uh, but I need to get some clamps. I don't have sitting right here. That's it. That's how you rebuild a Articat fuel pump on a 2010 TRV 700S, very similar to a lot of the other fuel pumps used by Articat, and hope it was useful to you. Again, go to www.highflowfuel.com, hit the folks up at Quantum Fuel Systems, 
and they have all the fuel pump parts you need available on their website at a very reasonable price. This unit right here, to buy brand new, you're looking at $500. I did it for just a fraction of the cost and, and still have an OEM pump in there. Thank you.